imagine that you have been asked to deploy a web app. Typically, the setup consists of front-end web app and back-end database. Now, let me ask you a couple of questions. How do this front-end web app is exposed to the outside world? Second, how do this front-end web app is connected to the back-end database? And third and most important, Pods do die. When they die, it gets recreated if the controller is supporting. When they recreated, IP changes. Then it will be difficult to connect and communicate when IP changes dynamically. Now, how can we address about these three problems in Kubernetes? Hello and welcome to Services. My name is Srinath Chala. I'm a certified Kubernetes administrator. In next few minutes, I'll try my best to explain what is a service, what does it do, what are the types of it. But before you watch this video, it is good to have a basic understanding of what is a pod, replica set, deployments, and kubectl. If you need a help with that, please do check the links in the description below. So without any further delay, let's take a look at the things you'll be learning as part of this video. Coming to the primary objectives of this video, first we'll discuss why we need services in first place. Then we'll discuss what is a service actually. And finally, we'll discuss what are the different types of services. So with that, let's get started with why we need services in first place. Before we discuss what is a service, let's start with why we need a service. So we'll take a look at the same questions we discussed at the beginning of this video. Here's a diagram with a front-end web app and back-end database. And there are users who are trying to access this web app. And now coming to the questions. First, as we know, every pod in Kubernetes has a unique IP address. And these pods are ephemeral, meaning pods are created and die. And there are various reasons why these pods are die. If there are controllers such as replica set or deployments behind these pods, then these controllers will make sure it recreates the pods. Problem here is when the controller recreate the pod, pod will get the new IP address. So every time pods gets recreated, it gets new IP address. So there is no consistency. And this leads to a problem. If some set of pods, let's call them as backend pods, provide some kind of a functionality to other pods. Let's call them as front-end pods inside Kubernetes cluster. So the question is, how do these front-end pods find out and keep track of back-end pods that are in that set? Second question is, every app is made up of multiple microservices. Each of the microservices is deployed into their individual pod. So in order to work this app properly, all these individual microservices which are present in the pods are need to be connected and communicated together. And the question is, how is this done? And the final question is, how do these apps are exposed to end users who are trying to access the internet? So these are the three important questions we have. So to recap it again, we need a solution to deal with pods consistent IP issue. Second, we need to connect and communicate pods together. And finally, we need to expose the web app to outside world. And that is where services comes into the picture. So what is a service? Service is a way of grouping of pods that are running on the cluster. Services are cheap and you can have as many services as possible within your cluster. Services provide some of the important features that are standardized across the cluster, such as load balancing, service discovery between apps, and features to support zero downtime app deployments. So to better understand the concept around services, let's take a look at the diagram here. We have a node which consists of a couple of front-end pods, which has web app and the back-end pods, typically a database. Here, we need to expose only front-end apps to outside world not the backend database. For that, we need to create different types of services. We will discuss that in a bit. But overall, in this scenario, 
we need two services. So there is one service which stays between users and the front-end pods, which is called as front-end service. And another service is to communicate front-end pods with back-end pods, which is called as back-end service. So once we have these services in place, it groups the pods and connects them together. Now the important question. So now let's imagine that we have created pods and services. But how do these services discover their respective pods and connect to it? Answer is labels and selectors. So each pod has a label to it. For example, all the front-end pods can have front-end as a label in pod spec file. So to group the front-end pods together, we mention the same label in service spec file. That is how each of these services recognize their respective pods. And it goes same with the backend services as well. And now let's see what are the different types of services in Kubernetes. There are primarily three types of services that will come across quite often in Kubernetes. In this slide, we'll go through at a very high level about this. And we have a dedicated video for each of these. And the first one in this list is cluster IP service. Cluster IP service is reachable only within the cluster. So the scope of cluster IP is pretty much confined to the cluster. So some of the use cases of cluster IP services are scenarios, which we just discussed in the previous slide, where you want to connect front-end pods to the back-end pods. Typically, we don't expose back-end database pods to the outside world because of obvious security reasons. Then in such cases, your cluster IP comes into the picture to connect between the front-end pods to the back-end pods. Second, we have a node port. There are other set of pods that you need to expose to the outside world. In the same example we just discussed above, where you want to expose web app to outside world on the internet. And that's when we will actually use node port. And finally, we have load balancer. Let's say your front-end app instances are distributed across a couple of nodes inside your Kubernetes cluster. Then it comes problematic, which node IP should you use to access the app? And the second problem is, you don't want to overload one specific node and leave out all other nodes ideal. So you need a proper load balancing across all the nodes. So to address this, we use the load balancer. So we'll discuss all these services in detail in their respective dedicated videos. So far we have discussed why we need services, what are services, and what are the different types of services. And before we end this video, let's review some of the important points that we discussed in this video as part of this summary. So coming to the summary, first we discussed why we need services. Then we discussed what is actually a service. And finally, we discussed what are the types of services and they are cluster IP service, node port service and load balancer service. And moving on to the next video and that is node port service. In node port service video, we'll discuss what is a node port, what are the different types of ports and what are the various scenarios of configuring node port. And link to that video is provided in the description below. And finally, thank you so much for watching this and I hope to see you in the next video.